These are a couple of birthday presents. And I'm sure all of you who watch my videos recognize these air conditioners. These are both sharp comfort touch air conditioners from the 90s. And although they are the same physical size, one of them is an 8500 BTU and the other one is a 10,500 BTU. Uh, and these are both from 1995. I have a few of the 8500 BTUs and they are all from 1997. So this is the first 8500 that I have from 1995. And this one up here is a 10,500 and I have a couple of those too. And they're all from 1995. This one is from 1995 as well. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll, I'll turn these so we can get a better look at the data sheet. These are both going to need some cleaning and the motors need to be oiled because uh, the bearings are kind of noisy so I'm going to take care of that and I'm going to wash them good as the grills are a little dusty I'm sure the filters are probably pretty dirty too and of course the condensers are going to be dirty so I'll get all, get all that taken care of <clears throat> these have Matsushita compressors and Samsung fan motors uh, the 10,500 BTU has a bigger compressor and it has more rows, or more layers I should say, not more rows on the evaporator coil. So, take a look at the information here. You can see the date code, 95D, so this is from 1995. And then here we have... The 8500 BTU, this one is also from 1995. Alright, I will start these up and run them just so you can see or hear how they sound now. They do both start and run, but they are in desperate need of oil and cleaning. So I'm going to do that after I run them. I'll uh, give you a look at the back of the units first. Now that I move this stupid ironing board out of the way, I can actually maybe get back here. And there are the backs. Got the 10,500 on top and the 8,500 on the bottom. Pretty much the same. All of the ones from 1995 that I have, the uh, uh, logos are pretty faded on the outside. The ones from 97, they're all still they all still look like new. All right, let's turn on the 10,500. I think the bearing is pretty noisy on this one, so be prepared for that. Yeah, that bearing sounds terrible. That needs a lot of oil. And of course, you can replace these bearings too because they're ball bearings, but I'm going to try oiling it first. See if we can get the compressor to start. Started. I'm not going to run that one long because it really does not sound happy, so... Yeah, that thing needs oil bad. So I'm going to start up the bottom one next. This one doesn't make nearly as much noise. All right, let's start up the 8500. This one's a lot quieter, as you can hear. Let's get these things apart and start servicing them. Alright, I'm starting with the 8500. 
It doesn't look too bad in there. I mean, that blower is pretty kind of dirty, but this is certainly not the worst I've seen. And the filter is actually pretty clean. Well, it's a little dusty, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, so... Let's, uh, let's slide this out of the case so we can see the rest of it. Alright, 8500 is out. Really, these things tend not to rust very much, which is good. And there's our compressor. Samsung fan motor. Yeah, this one is from 1995. Let's see, what is the date code on the motor? Looks like October 15th, 1995. I don't know if you can tell or not on video, but that uh, condenser coil is actually a little bent. I don't know how people treat these so poorly. I mean, it just amazes me. But it still works fine, so I'm going to clean this and then oil it. That uh, coil is pretty, pretty dusty looking, so that'll need to be cleaned big time. Alright, I got the coils real nice and clean. I used a little bit of coil cleaner on them. As you can see, that evaporator is super clean now. And bottom is cleaned out, and the condenser is also very clean now. So, that's good. A little rust down there, but it's clean now, so that's good. It looks like I missed a few things there. I'll, I'll take care of that. Alright, I got the evaporator coil loose, and as you can see, it's pretty nasty down in there, so that's going to have to be all washed. I think someone's been in here because there weren't any screws on this side like there usually would be, and screws right here were in for the control box, but the ones on the back were not there, so someone's been in here before. Got the styrofoam out. It's really dirty, and as you can see, it broke like it usually does. And as long as I can get it all back in the right position, it'll be fine, and I'm obviously going to wash it. And I'm going to take this blower wheel off and wash that, because that's nasty. This is uh, pretty dirty in here. Alright, it's time to dump a whole bunch of oil down on that front bearing because those are the ones that get noisy. So I use this really thick Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer. You can put this in uh, engines, but I like to use it on these because it really lasts a long time and it does a good job quieting these down. So, yep, and I'm probably going to put some uh, 3 in 1 in there too. Oil's been sitting in there for a while. While that was uh, while that was sitting in there, I cleaned the blower wheel off. Looks very nice now. And I cleaned the styrofoam off. It's not completely perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. And I used soap and water on this. And I used uh, soap and water and an old toothbrush to clean this off. It worked pretty well. I think I'm going to let this sit for a while yet, and then I'll put it back together and we'll test it out, and then tomorrow I'll work on the 10,500 BTU. So that one needs oil even worse. Alright, I know it's dark in there. Let me get my flashlight out real quick. So as you can see, um, a lot of the oil went down, so that's all in the bearing. And I will... Let's run it on fan only real quick so you can hear how it sounds right now. I'm not obviously don't want to start the compressor when it's laying on its back, but sounds pretty quiet. And there's definitely plenty of oil in that bearing as you could see some came up when I started it. I'm gonna let it sit just a little while longer and then I'm gonna start putting this one back together. Uh, it's pretty much good to go at this point. Alright, I got the clean blower wheel on. So, gonna start putting it back together. 
I'm gonna drop some oil on the outside bearing too, just for good measure. Alright, I dumped quite a bit of oil on that bearing, just for good measure. Alright, it's time to start it up and give it the test run. I found some screws and put in put them in this side because, uh, like I said before, those were missing. And you can see right through that coil now. Here we go. Sounds really good. Yeah, that's nice and quiet now. Is our amp drawing low? High. And medium. See if we can get the compressor to start. That's kind of vibrating. Maybe if I hold the thermistor, it'll start. Sounds pretty good. That's getting frosty like they always do when it first starts. And this is starting to get cold already. There's nothing wrong with that display, it's just the camera making it look weird. Alright, seems to be running perfectly. Compressor sounds really good. It's blowing nice cold air. Lots of air flow through the condenser. Alright, so I think this one's good to go. Work on that one tomorrow. Alright, it's the next morning. It's time to start working on the 10,500. So I'm going to take it apart and clean it first, and then I'll bring it over here after I move that one out of the way, and we'll uh, oil it. Alright, this one is pretty dirty. Blower wheel looks very, very dusty. And this evaporator coil is a little dirtier than the other one was. Got a bunch of dust on the bottom of the control panel. And the outside half, you can see all that crap up there. Just look in the bottom of this thing. It's full of junk. So, yeah, this thing is in major need of a cleaning and that condenser coil is totally blocked up with crap it's hard to see but yeah there's no way there's going to be any air flowing through there that is horrible here's another view of the condenser it's open right there but the rest of it is just blocked up with crap and there's a ton of junk down on the bottom that's going to have to be vacuumed out. Alright, I got it all cleaned out and I'm going to start taking it apart to oil it now. Bottom is a lot cleaner. There's some rust in this one unfortunately. I'm going to drill some drain holes in this one so it doesn't get any worse. And the condenser is nice and clean. Yep, time to start taking it apart. Alright, that styrofoam and the blower wheel are absolutely filthy in this one. I have the oil sitting in there. And, unfortunately this one 
sort of broken and uh, it was like that when I got it so I didn't I didn't mess it up or anything but I'm still gonna take it upstairs and clean it so it'll still work unfortunately that rear bearing is damaged beyond repair so I'll just let you listen to it I, I did oil it a lot and it still sounds like this So yeah, that's not good. And it's usually not the outer ones that make noise on these. But I'm going to have to replace that bearing, and it just so happens I have a new one right here, so I'm going to start taking this apart. I got the condenser fan blade off. It's just held on with a 10 millimeter nut. So now I'm going to take those two screws out. I've taken the motors out of these before, so it shouldn't be too bad. I got this thing off. This is uh, the air chamber for the condenser coil. So now you can just see the condenser. And now I can take the motor out because the blower wheel is off. There are four screws holding it in. Alright, this motor is held together with these these things. They're not screws. So, I'm going to just drill those out because they really aren't necessary anyway. Because uh, when the screws are holding the motor into here, it, it holds it together. So, I'm taking those out and I'm not going to replace them. There's no need. Alright, I got the motor split apart. There is the bearing that we're going to be replacing. This is a pretty substantial motor never seen inside one of these before, so it's kind of nice to finally be able to see inside. I got my puller on here, and the bearing is sliding off, so that's good. I got this stupid old bearing off. I had to use this thing and the three jaw puller and my impact gun. I was finally able to get this stupid thing off. Unfortunately, um, the threads that were on there for that nut to screw onto uh, kind of broke off. Because I had this uh, nut on there so I could put uh, this part, tip of the puller on there, and it just snapped it. So I ended up having to use this socket. Should have done that from the start really stupid. Alright, the motor's back in. I got the new bearings on. I'll let you listen to it real quick. It's a lot quieter than it was. Still getting some noise, but I don't know if there's really anything I can do about that. Alright, I finally got it put back together. It's been an all-day thing. Just did not go right. A lot of problems while I was working on this. That's why I didn't record much. But it's clean for the most part, and it should run fine. So let's start it up. sit here and run for a while. Getting plenty of airflow air through the condenser. It is the next morning and I am in a much better mood now. I ran this thing for a while. The compressor sounds great. Sounds as healthy as it could ever be and gets nice and cold. Uh, there's good airflow through the condenser. Just want to do a little recap of what I did with this yesterday since I was really in a bad mood towards the end of it and I didn't really go over much. I cleaned 
the uh, condenser coil with the hose and some coil cleaner because that thing was totally stopped up with a sheet of dust and I was actually able to vacuum some of that off but a lot of it had to be washed off and I, I wouldn't just vacuum a coil anyway I just wanted to get the loose stuff off of there so it went all clucked in the bottom and I took a wet dry vac and vacuumed all the sludge and crap that was down there out anything that's down there now that you see is just rust spots um, I know that the ones from 1997 have drain holes in the back area there or in the corner this one does not and uh, I think that's why these 95 units these 1995 units tend to have a little bit more rust whereas those uh, 1997 ones they hardly got any rust at all but uh, yeah so cleaned the condenser I cleaned the evaporator I took the uh, screws out of here so I could pull the evaporator out a little bit. I took the blower wheel off and washed it. Um, that's held on by a nut. And the, uh, you'll probably remember the fact that I showed earlier in the video, it was cracked uh, where the nut, um, or the part of the blower wheel was cracked where it goes on the shaft. So I put a hose clamp on it that was actually being used on another air conditioner that I took apart and parted out. And then I put a big washer on it and put the nut on it so it should be fine. Uh, I cleaned that styrofoam that was in here that was all filthy. Uh, what else? Obviously I washed out the bottom. Anything that you see down there now is really just rust. Um, and it's certainly not, not rusting through at all. It's it's fine. And I'm like I said, I'm going to drill another drain hole and it's going to... And it won't get any worse. So after that... I took this plastic shroud thing off, which is for the uh, condenser air chamber. Two screws on this side, and then there's a screw on this side that allows this cover to flap up. Same over here, and then two screws right there. And I also took off these screws on the bottom right here, and right here so that I could lift the condenser and move it back further. And of course I took this brace off, which is just held in by screws. I was able to get this uh, air chamber out of here, all this plastic. Uh, of course what I did first is I opened the flap up and I put a wrench down in there and I took the, uh, the fan blade off for the uh, condenser side. And then once I had this open, I went in there, I, I Loosen the screws that are at the bottom here, and then there's another one on this side. It's a lot easier to access through there when the fan blade is off. And then there are four screws holding this piece to the motor, so I took those out. It's kind of hard to see them, but, well, you can't really see them at all from here, but yeah, I took those out when I went in from, you know, this area, and I was able to move this plastic shroud out of here completely. And then after that, and of course I had the blower wheel off all that time, I was able to, let's see if you can see it, unscrew the motor from its mounting location. Got one screw right there. There's four in total, one on each corner. And uh, I was able to get the motor out. And this is a big motor too. You can see how deep it is. It goes all the way up to there and all the way out to there. Uh, so I took that out, I drilled the rivets that were holding the motor halves together out because, you know, if, if I really needed to, I would have replaced them with just little bolts and nuts. But the uh, screws that hold this, this motor to its mounting point also hold the motor together, so I didn't think it was necessary. But uh, you can certainly uh, do that with the, you can certainly put little nuts and bolts in there if you that makes you feel more comfortable and of course while I had it apart I replaced both bearings just because uh, one of them I didn't feel it was necessary to replace at first but I kind of uh, accidentally wrecked it when I was I don't remember exactly what I was doing when it happened but it got messed up so I just went to the hardware store and picked up a new one this is a very standard size and you can get them at Ace, at Ace Hardware, so that's what I did. So now I got front and rear bearing replaced, 
and should be nice and quiet for some time. So that's good. And uh, yeah, it's running pretty good. And you'll notice that plastic right there. I'm pretty sure I showed you yesterday, but that stupid threaded uh, rod that was on there, that coming off the shaft, the threaded part that the uh, nut that holds this fan blade on would screw onto, that broke off. So I had to just put some plastic in there and put it on there as tight as I could, and it seems to be fine. And since, because of the way this turns, it's always going to be pushing the fan back anyway, so it's not going. It's not like it's going to fly off of there. So it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, I will go ahead and plug it in, and we can see how it sounds. I ran this for a long time yesterday after I was done recording, and uh, like I said, it ran great. But let's start it up again. This gets cold. And it's already blowing cold air out of here. So here's one of the 8500s. You can see the size of this compressor. And then we go over to the 10,500. Now you can see that compressor is uh, noticeably larger. That is a big compressor in there. But you gotta love these Matsushita compressors. They sure run smooth and they sure sound good. noise you're hearing is just a refrigerant going through the lines. The bearings are pretty quiet compared to how they used to be. Started up on high. And here's the first one we worked on in this video. This is the 8500 BTU from 1995. This one I didn't have to take the motor apart, I was able to just oil it and it was fine, but let's start it up and see how it sounds. I think it even needs to be said that I really like these sharp air conditioners from the 90s. I grew up around them and they're really good units. They last forever, they cool really well, they sound good. For me, that the sound of one of those sharp air conditioners running is the sound of summer, so that's why I like them so much. 
or at least a few of the reasons. And the compressor just shut off. So, turn that one off. And I'll start the one up from 1997 just uh, to give you a little comparison. Because uh, the fan motor on the 97s are a little bit louder. That you can have, you hear more uh, motor harmonics on those. So let me turn those on, or turn that one on. All right, here's the 97. One difference you'll notice, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier, is that the 10,500 BTUs have two layers on the evaporator and the loops on the condenser are thicker. They also have a bigger compressor, so although the unit is the same physical size, it does, it does have uh, parts which make it a 10,500 BTU. And then we go over to the 8500 and you can see there's only one layer on the evaporator and the tubes on the condenser are smaller and the compressor is smaller but other than that the physical size is the same obviously the 10500 is going to be heavier because it has a bigger compressor and it has uh, thicker tubes and another layer to the evaporator so that's uh, those are the main differences between the two